Hey folks, Quilithian here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Kerbal Space Program. Today, we are sending a, uh, a satellite to the moon. We have a contract to do that, and we want to follow that up by sending a manned mission either to the moon or Minmus, depending on what um, contracts come up after that. Now, this is the same launcher, the same lifter, as we used to insert our satellite into polar orbit. And despite the fact that the moon is further, I don't think we need any extra Delta V than this. Now, that's despite the fact that the mission actually requires us to send a materials bay on the satellite, which is adding a fair amount of weight. These things are extraordinarily heavy. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be too bad, because unlike the regular satellite missions, all we have to do is extend our apoapsis towards the moon. We don't have to raise our periapsis. And because we're going to be sort of planning our orbital insertion in the moon from so far away, we can make very minute changes that are going to have very large consequences on our... Um, on our final orbit. The one tricky bit here is that I do have to make sure I don't go up as steeply because we don't want to spend a lot of Delta V getting to a high orbit here around Kerbin. We want to save all of our Delta V for um, getting to the moon, but for now we are okay. Um, we're pretty much exactly where I would normally want to be here. I'm going to hold it a little bit. There we go, and then start gravity turning a little bit more. We're just about ready to stage. Hopefully the fins don't get in the way, but as long as I'm facing prograde when we stage here, surface prograde should be perfectly safe. So just waiting for that. There we go. I did go and uh, I added these fins for stability, and I also derated the two, um, whatever, the, I don't can't remember what those engines are called. But they, the two engines on our side, well, they're not, they're not SRBs, but uh, liquid fuel boosters, uh, I derated them to 80% so that I could run at full throttle and have the full power from the one gimbling engine. Oh, that's kind of cool in the mouse over. See all the uh, the particle effects lit up with the shader there. All right, there we go. We are closing in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and kill it now. We've got lots of fuel left in this stage. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. Apparently, I still... Let me burn it a little this way here. There we go. Now we should be high enough to be okay. No? There we are. Because there's still a little bit of atmosphere left. Some token atmosphere. So I'll leave it on a very low burn to help us um, keep a little bit of stability because the gimbling there can help us steer. It's not really costing us much Delta V, but it gives us just a little bit more than the reaction wheels can handle in of them themselves. All right, we've got that. Plenty of electric charge in this thing. We've got our solar panels as well. And right now we've got this. So we are about to enter space, which is great. All right, now I'm going to turn that off because we're not too concerned anymore. I will, oh yeah, the reaction wheels on this are very minimal. This is a lot of weight for this to try to reaction wheel, which makes this not great, but we may as well use all this fuel to help us um, circularize and then actually send us towards the moon. We basically just want to use this to help us steer a little bit when we get there. We are definitely overkilling it on the, um, on the uh, Delta V, but that's what happens when you don't actually have a Delta V calculator. Just pull this out to the point where the apoapsis and periapsis want to invert, and then we get a maneuver planned. Burn. Really? That long? No, that's probably because I've been going on relatively minimal fuel. We'll see what happens. I'll start the burn now. No, it really does think the burn's going to be that long. Interesting. Actually, I think I can scale it back just a scooch here. Started a little too soon. Yeah, quite surprised, but I don't know. I guess we did go up relatively steeply, so we were not a very flat, um, like, sort of ballistic arc, which is, means we need more burn over here. Okay, there we go. Then I delayed it a little too much after that, but it should be fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to circularize, and then we're going to wait for the moon to come up over the horizon. Where's the moon right now? There. And we are here, so we're going to have to do almost a full orbit before the moon comes up, and that's okay. So just going to wait for this maneuver to run out. We can also just watch for circularization. I mean, basically, it's about burning um, burning prograde, more or less, until things flip. I'm going to cancel the maneuver, and we'll just watch it happen. Incoming, and there. Okay, we're nicely in orbit. So one of the things we haven't actually looked at yet is the new CurbNet feature, and this is probably a great opportunity to do, except for the fact that we're over the ocean, and therefore it's going to be really boring. Hold on, let me just fast forward so that we're over some interesting terrain. There we go, like that. So the CurbNet feature is something that's present on all um, probe cores here. 
So we can load this up and what we get is we get a map view, very similar to ScanSat, for example. We can change the field of view. So if I bring the field of view down, that is actually like zooming in. If I make it larger here, we are zooming out, we are seeing more. Um, and what I can do is I can also drag this a little bit around. And if you don't want the uh, grid lines, you can do that. You can hide that, the cursor as well. And after you've done it, you can actually put down a waypoint if you want. There we go. So it puts down a waypoint, which then we can refer to over here on the map. Boom. Delete waypoint. Very cool little feature. Um, the probe cores we have access to right now, the Probodobodyne and the... Um, the Probodobodyne Octo and the... The Stiputnik, they only can do terrain mapping, which might be slightly helpful for mapping our potential landing spots on the moon, but I don't know. Uh, but the later ones will do biome tracking and resource tracking as well. So that's the sort of uh, the quasi ScanSat style implementation. The difference being that unlike ScanSat, the, this doesn't sit around like memorizing um, and, and actually like, you know, uh, creating a bitmap as it passes. It only shows you what's under it at any given time. So if we look at it now, it's just going to be ocean down there. So there's not a whole lot to see. And it is based on zoom. If we're higher up, in fact, if we switched over to one of our satellites, what would happen is they would see Kerbin as like a tiny little dot over here because they'd be so far away, which is really, I don't know, I think that's a really interesting concept. So what we're going to do here is we're going to wait for the moon to start to rise. So basically we're going to warp to around here. I'm not going to plan a maneuver. Um, I say that, and then I remember that we need to insert ourselves into an orbit. Yeah, but that's okay. I'll still just start it like this, and then we'll stop when it, when we get our initial encounter, and then I'll plan a maneuver to tweak it into the orbit that we're actually looking for, and I think that's going to be perfectly fine. Uh, coming up there, we can definitely do a little bit better. That might be a little much. Hmm. Stop, 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 stop. That's not the moon over there, is it? I think it is. Oh, shoot. And then we're going to turn really, 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 really slowly. Oh, my God. I guess I could, like, give us a little bit of that. Uh, I'm turning the wrong way. Well, fine. Just keep going. Go all the way around. Yep, the moon is, I believe, uh, I might be wrong. Yeah, it's there. So we're definitely burning a little bit late, which is far from the ideal. Far from the ideal. I started turning the wrong way, but I can't do anything about it because the turning speed is so apocalyptic with such a long... There we go. There's our lunar injection burn. Finally started. So a wee bit late, but I think we're going to be okay. We'll just encounter it in a slightly unoptimal spot, potentially. So we're going to set focus, not set focus, sorry. We are going to set as a target. And we're going to see the uh, the rendezvous start to work out here. It's possible we won't actually get an intercept here, because that burn is a little bit late. But I think we're going to be just fine. Okay, there's the stage. There we go, start the next one. There we are. Um, there we go. There's our intercept. So now I want to focus on the moon. <clears throat> and our intercept is there right now. But more importantly, here you can see the orbit we're trying to achieve, which is actually a clockwise orbit. So I'm going to keep going with the burn. So we're coming in on the other side over here. And what I'm trying to do, uh, we'll have to do a little bit of a... Um, I don't know if it's normal or anti-normal burn part of the way. Oh, it's really quite angled. We're coming in beautifully equatorial. Really well done. But we need a little bit of an angle um, to sort that out. So I'm not going to work on it anymore. What we're going to try to do is end up with our incoming route being tangential to the actual desired orbit at some point. Actually, this would be fine. You know what, now that I think about it. Um, because we are basically... We're basically crossing very close on multiple axes axes somewhere over here i think just a tiny bit more there we go and i'd say we are basically spot on for crossing over here so what we'd like to do right here is do a combination burn that is anti-normal and retrograde
Oh, that's not all though. I'll tweak it back this way. And then we'll have to include a little bit of radial burn. It's one of those that you couldn't really eyeball this burn. Although, what you could do is just do one radial burn to close your orbit and then make subsequent burns to adjust things. But it's a lot more optimal if you do them all in one go. But because each change affects the other axes, can be kind of tricky to get it to do exactly what you want in one go. Now we don't have to be a hundred percent bang on. Oops, that's not what I want to pull. We don't have to be a hundred percent bang on. There's some margin for error, and of course we could still follow it up with his secondary burn, but that's pretty good. That is really good. 250 millisecond or uh, uh, meter per second delta v change is very very doable. I'm kind of okay with this. So we've got nothing to do with the satellite right now. If we're concerned about power or being, you know, eclipsed or anything like that. Oh, I never did um, decouple you. Uh, we could put the um, the satellite on hibernation mode. Boop. Which when you do this, I can't steer. Um, I don't know if I can do other things. I don't know if there, there's other toggles that I could do. Apparently I might still be able to shut down the engine. I don't know if you could extend things, like while I'm hibernated, can I extend this antenna? Looks like yes, so I just don't have any controls while hibernated, but apparently it runs in something like 1% of its normal power, which is pretty good. So we're gonna unhibernate though, because we've got solar power, so we're gonna be fine. Um, we're a little bit not, well, we're not facing the sun here, so I'm gonna give us a little bit of rotation, although at a risk of potentially changing our orbit as we enter the moon. Especially actually with decoupling that, we may have shifted things just slightly. But that's all right. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to quick save before I do a warp. We're going to warp to just about our encounter. And then we're going to see if we want to make some sort of adjustment. Our signal should be good all the way, assuming that, you know, we've understood things properly. We'll see how it goes. Signal strength is still reporting. Oh, there we go. It's finally starting to drop here. We don't have the high gain antenna, it's worth noting. But still, 99% is pretty good. Um... How come I can't? Hold on. I want to be able to focus on the moon. Burr? There it is. Thank you. Yeah, we're not um, intersecting exactly where we were before, so my whole maneuver planning has gone kind of kaput, unfortunately. Now, we're still going a crossover mostly there. Mostly okay, although really we'd want a little swing out. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until we actually um, intercept the moon. So go ahead and warp to here. Actually, you can go ahead and just make your way through. That's fine. Funny little gravity pattern here because we're swinging into the moon in a different, uh, a different angle than we normally do. Because normally we'd actually be coming in from the other side. Okay, so kill this time warp. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to manually burn anti-radial to start off with. There we go. Because what I want to do is, oh, it's hard to tell, see exactly where we end up. But I want to swing out our orbit just a little. There we go. That seems a little bit better. So it looks to me like we're crisscrossing over here, which is much better again. So then what we're going to do is plan our maneuver out very similarly to what we just did already. We do it once, first to close the buckle, and then we're going to adjust that that way. And then a little bit more retrograde, and then we're going to need to swing it over that way, a little more retrograde, and I guarantee you we're going to have to make a little bit more of an adjustment here. There we go. That's pretty damn close. So we're going to we're gonna just go for that, and if that doesn't lock in our orbit, we'll do another adjustment afterwards. So that's going to be okay. So we're going to face ourselves towards our maneuver node. Excellent. I'm going to quick save, and I'm going to tell it to warp to next maneuver. 
which should stop with about a minute to go. And it's only a 12 second burn, so that's going to be perfectly fine. I do miss the alarm clock though. God, there's the moon. Looking great. Looking fantastic. We are... We have no signal. <gasps> I have no signal. Are we eclipsed? Oh, shit. Because we had range until a second ago, didn't we? Uh, well, what we're going to do then is we're basically just going to fast forward until we get a signal again. There it is. Stop, 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 stop. And I'm going to do my best to execute the maneuver as planned. We are very late. So we'll definitely not be quite right, but we're mostly making the kind of changes that we're looking for. Bam. Alright, I'm going to stop it here. Because it doesn't make sense to execute the maneuver exactly. It looks to me at a glance that our orbital size is about right. The only problem is our inclination. So what we're going to do is it's going to be at our right over here. This is our ascending node, which means we are actually... It's our DC, okay, sorry, it's the ascending node of the uh, the satellite, but we are going to be crossing down through the plane that the satellite is going through over here, so we're going to want to burn upwards, which normal would be, it's this one here, there we go, we want to burn along the normal axis, and right over there, so what it's going to do, it's going to swivel everything right over here, so that our blue path goes up to meet the red path over there. So let's do this a little bit more safely. We're going to warp to here. Vroom. Now we got a signal. Nice to see the loss of signal, though. That is fantastic. Very exciting. So we know that eclipsing is a problem. It's not a problem at Kerbin. Uh, default remote tech only has a, um, a connection at the KSE. I love the fact that there's multiple connections all over the planet, which is exactly how it was on Earth during a lot of the space missions. We had little radio stations all over the place. Um, and so that's great, but being behind the moon does eclipse us, and that's wonderful. All right. Ooh, no, I got it wrong. Wrong symbol. Shoot. That's okay. Used very little delta V doing that. This is the symbol I want, apparently. Oh, uh, come back. Come back. There we are. And just watching the end over here. Bam. Maybe it was a descending node. Maybe, I, um, maybe I'm getting my frame of reference a little off. In any case, let's take a look at our contract here. So we are not, we are not close enough for it to count, and we're a little bul bulged out over here. It looks like the best way to correct the final tweaks over here um, is for us to. Our parries are about in the same place, which is nice. Uh, we could move it through doing a few other adjustments, but so probably right around here. This would be the most accurate place to do it. We're going to burn retrograde like that. Actually, looks like around here. Although we don't want to shrink the parry there. No, so I'll do it this way. That'll be fine. Um, just a microscopic little burn at the opposite side of our um, orbit is really what it's doing. So I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm just going to warp to here. We'll face retrograde. And just do a little... Oh, again. Again, though. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, we're going to have to do the burn here. <laughs> because we're, we're having to do the burn when we can't actually see Kerbal. Now, if this were remote tech, we could program a flight compu computer to perform the maneuver for us. Which has, like, some a lot of realism. It's very cool. But also, you know, means you're not doing things manually anymore, right? You're just, like, programming in your move and then it's hands off. Which is very realistic. But there's something fun about still doing it manually here. But it means we have to make sure not to be eclipsed. There we go. That should count. Indeed it is. Just wants its stability maintained for 10 seconds. Which it's going to do. Now at this point, I'm wondering, and I guess I may as well. I'm going to go ahead and observe the material bay and transmit the data. We're only going to get 84% um, of it. What's the plus 49? I don't know. Yep, transmit it. That's fine. Hopefully we've got enough power to do a full send. We may have to make an adjustment so it can do a partial send. So we're not going to get all the science. We could always get the rest of it later when we are here with a physical um, 
uh, a physical module. We can get whatever is left if we want to bother with that. But there we go. So that was a one-shot thing with the module. We can't use it anymore, but that's okay. We still have a little bit more science waiting for us at home, and certainly a lot of money. And now we're starting to build just a wee bit of a network over here. This is not really in a position that's going to be good for a contiguous network. Although it's interesting. It's almost, but not quite, doesn't get eclipsed by the moon here. And actually, it depends on what part of our orbit we're in anyway. So it's not like a perfect one. Uh, a polar lunar orbit is a really good way to always see Kerbin. And then you pair that with a equatorial orbit so that the equator one will get eclipsed a lot, but it will always be able to see the, po the polar one in one form or another, and the polar one will almost always be able to convert. It can... Um, converse to the KSC, uh, except if it's just the one moment it's passing behind, but it's a very large orbit, it's not very likely to happen very long. This is actually a remarkably small orbit for a satellite. Um, it's great, probably, for us to do our CurbNet stuff, though. CurbNet is offline, right, of course. Uh, let's wait until we've got a signal again. Doop, 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 There it is. So now let's try that again. CurbNet access, so we can take a look at the moon. And yeah, we can see here, we're at a distance where the moon we're only seeing, like, well, we've seen the whole thing of it, so our ability to get resolution is a little bit um, impacted, but not really. So, you know, we could put a little waypoint here for, say, um, for our, um, like, inside of a crater. That might be a good landing spot, but this is such a low-resolution scan. I do love it, though. I think this is fantastic. Very, very old-school kind of thing going on here. We can refresh to update the thing. I also like that it doesn't, like, auto-scroll on you, so even if you, like, you know, it takes you forever to process things, it's still there until you hit refresh, and then you're like, oh yeah, okay. Um, yeah. Because we don't have a resource scanner, there's not really anything special. This has, a, I believe, a 6% chance of detecting an anomaly, um, which is not very high. But there we are. Okay, so, that is that. Let's go ahead, let's go to the Space Center. Uh, let's check our contracts. I'm hoping, because we've got one for Minmus and one for the Moon, but not any real overlap. I'm hoping there's going to be more. Science data from space around the Moon. You know what? We can cons um, we can complete that instantaneously. Observational study of the Moon. Crew reports in space flight below near these places. Yeah, see, that's really, that's really tough. I'm just going to get rid of that. Hope we get something better. But you want science from around the Moon. We can do that in a second, because we can go here. We can take a quote-unquote thermometer reading. Uh, if we can find our thermometer, which is right there. Take it. It's got zero science, but that's okay. We can still transmit a zero science. Boom. And that will count as completing our contract. So now every time we get a contract that says sp science from space around the moon, we can instantly do it. We've got the same thing for Kerbin as well, which is fantastic. And more and more of that will start to develop over time. Polar orbit, polar orbit. Uh, test heat shields. Yes, yeah, I don't necessarily need any of this or that. Or that. Ooh, position a satellite in synchronous orbit of Minmus. Well, I'm going to mark that off because we're going to want it at some point. But, all right, so it's not giving us another one to, like, land on the moon or Minmus. We've got one. I think one's, like, plant a flag on Minmus, and the other one is get science from the surface of the moon. Actually, hold on. Let me check that. Let me go here because it's a little easier to read. Science data from the surface of the moon. We could do that with a probe. You know, part of me is wondering, I could have probably built that satellite to complete the satellite mission and then land. Although we might get a mission afterwards to um, uh, to move that satellite, so it's still worth having it out there. But why don't we just land a microscopic little probe on the moon, send some data back, and then do a manned mission to Minmus? I kind of like that. I don't think I've ever just sent an unmanned probe to the moon or Minmus, because it's so close and easy to land on. We're actually like, and we're going to get less out of this. Do I have enough science for, like, the um, the little probe parts, the little probe um, fuel cells? Yeah. All right, let's do that. Oh, this is going to be cool. I'm actually really excited. I mean, I know, like, in a, in a sense, sending a person uh, should represent, you know, a harder and more significant job. But this is, this is so different. And then we're going to have to worry about the signal and not losing it. So we're going to have to make sure we land on the side that's facing Kerbin, just in case the satellite doesn't have access. So now we've got these little, little tiny fuel tanks. Um, and we have to decide if we want to put the engine underneath, or I guess we don't really have the, um, the little side engine. So I guess we're going to go ahead with that. 
that's going to be okay. Oh, I'm so excited. And then for our lander bits, the micro struts are really like, really going to be quite good for us. Three is going to be plenty. The only downside is that because this is an octocore, not a hexacore, it looks a little bit funny. But I don't really want to put four landers on here because this is going to give us all the stability we want and it's a little bit lighter. So that's great. Um, obviously, we don't need a high gain antenna. Clearly, the regular communitron is perfectly fine. We don't. We still don't have fairings, do we? No, that's too bad. Um, so we're going to have that, and we're going to need some solar panels. I think I'm going to do that. That seems entirely reasonable to me. And then we are going to have to transmit some science. Oh, we're going to need um, we're going to need some battery power here. Let's get you there. There we go. Now all of a sudden the legs are going to look less stupid because we're actually just going to attach them to the bottom part. Like that. There we go. This is going to be our probe. Uh, this has reaction wheels, so it can steer itself. It's got some amount of delta V. I have no idea how much it's going to have. Um, how much thrust is it looking at right now? It's a half a ton. So the thrust over here is, yeah, we're going to have a crazy amount of thrust. And um, our thrust to weight ratio, while it's going to be uh, it's going to be dramatically reduced. So here, okay, it weighs half a ton, which means effectively you can think of the pull of, uh, the, the force of gravity um, is going to be sitting around like, what, 4.5 kilonewtons down? And this in a vacuum is 18. So already we have like, um, what, three and a half to one ratio? But that's assuming on Kerbin, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be like, what, one-sixth the gravity on the moon? On the moon? So, therefore, it's going to be a ridiculous, a ridiculous amount of, um, of thrust. So, that's going to be great and fine. And uh, we need a science experiment, so we've got something to send home. So, it's going to go ahead and get the thermometer. And what the hell? We can send the press mat. Press mat's relatively expensive, though. 3300 Look at this. This entire probe costs us three grand. This one experiment would more than double the cost, so we're not going to do that. We're just going to land it, take the temperature, and then that will be that. Uh, which, but I think that's really exciting. So we're going to crunch that up a little bit. We are going to put in a, um, a decoupler like this, which is fine. Again, we don't have a coupling or um, uh, what do you call it? The aerodynamic shell thing. K uh, fairing. We don't have a fairing. So launching this is going to be aerodynamically pretty weak sauce, but that's okay. Um, I think... Just something like this is going to get us remarkably far. And then another stack decoupler. And then the launch is going to be one, two, maybe three. Even that's going to be just ludicrous. Ludicrous amount of punch. Um, and we're going to do that. The big problem is going to be that there is going to be uh, some air resistance problems because we don't have a fairing. But that's okay. I think it's adorable. Oh, that's great. Great stuff. So again, it's got solar power there. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to throw on, um, just for our path there, I'm going to throw on some solar power, some solar panels here, just three, so that we've got a little bit more um, safety and consistency in terms of what angles we can get some light from. That is going to get jettisoned. Uh, although, you know what? I could also just put it here. That means more weight on the descent. How much do these things weigh? Basically nothing. Where's the, um, yeah, so I don't want to override that. Uh, some things are going to get shadowed by the um, the landing gear, though. You know what? I'm going to go back to my plan over here. I'm going to keep this lander super duper lightweight. And I would be shocked, shocked, if that does not easily make it to the moon. Oh, I love it! Uh, moon probe one. There we go. Not a satellite, but it's going to be a probe that we're going to land on the moon. Now, we don't have, like, moving wheels. That's too bad, because it would be fun if this thing could roll around. Next time, next mission. Uh, we're gonna do that. Oh, and, 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 very importantly, lights. We're gonna get some lights up on here. Um, they don't, they need like tiny little lights. This is, these are actually bigger. Well, they're about the same size. They're just square instead of round. These are gonna be ridiculous amounts of lightage. I could clip them inside. 
our uh, design so they would actually look less ridiculous and I think I kind of like that idea just purely cosmetic um, do they not have like a local access tool I guess they don't yeah you know I'm not I'm not happy about this I think I'm just gonna leave them good enough good enough it's a bit ridiculous but I like ridiculous. Okay. So we're going to do this. Sending this to the moon so that we can send science back. And then we will send a person to Minmus. Yeah, this um, thrust weight is pretty ridiculous. And especially with the lack of aerodynamic content at the top here. We're going to have to be a little bit more cautious. Maybe not quite that cautious. Maybe I'm overestimating our thrust to weight ratio here. There's a lot of fuel in this bottom part. Did I even pay attention to their staging? Um, I didn't, but remarkably, it's correct. Um, no, 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 no. And then I just fucking broke it. You are going to go there. That's what I want you to do. So you're going to detach and light. And then we'll just detach and not light that one right away. The thrust, to, or the delta V provided by this upper stage should be pretty ridiculous. Uh, you remember how we're supposed to gravity turn, though, Quill? It's still kind of important. So we're going to actually take some uh, aerodynamic abuse here and lose some efficiency and it wants to topple over so I'm having to fight that behavior right now because I'm, I'm shifting quite aggressively sideways all right we're okay I do wish the um, the probe core had an experiment that we could use um, the not remote tech um, the What's that other science mod that I run um, that adds a bunch more experiments? I don't remember what it's called, but it adds the ability to send um, like probe telemetry, basically like a crew report, but from a probe, and I like that. So we're going to slow this down a bit there, because this heat, uh, it's not the greatest. How are we looking? Okay, well above where we need to be. I'm going to save a little bit of our first stage here. Okay, now we're basically leaving the hardcore atmosphere. I'm just going to try to slowly, but as quickly as we can go, I'm going to tip over to the horizon and then burn that way with what's very little is left of our fuel in this stage here um, before I go and stage to the next one. Because we're already going into space. Just going to try to flatten our orbit a scooch here. Good. And then... There we go. Launch that. And... Good. All right. Good enough. Okay. So once again, we're going to wait until we get into space, which is now. Therefore, this has been solidified. So now we can add a maneuver here to circularize. Bam. Fast forward. There we go. Just make sure we've got a moment to steer here. We should have lots of time. Because it's very steerable at the size that it is. Good, and with uh, 21 seconds to go, we'll start the burn. There's the moon, so we're going to still, again, oh, there we go, I always get distracted. We're going to have to do another full orbit again before we launch, because you know, we are landing on the moon. We don't care where we land, anywhere we'll do just fine. So, a fair amount of delta V for the circularization burn, but I'm hoping we've got enough in this tank, and actually to do the lunar injection phase as well. Well, we might be a little bit lower on um, on total delta V than I'd like. Partially, I, I'm sure, the aerodynamics of our launch being so miserable are having a major, major, major impact on that. Worst case scenario, well, we end up with another satellite. I'm just going to keep burning to the horizon over here and take a look at our current status of things. Oh, yeah, we actually overburned there, so I screwed something up with our maneuver. But that's okay. All right, so... Moon, you are over there. Excellent. We are going to warp to here. Only at times 50. Very, very annoying that we can't go any faster here because we're at the lower... Um, we're, we're not high enough, but, you know, it's fair enough. Ooh, times 100. That's because our, um, our apoapsis here is actually too high, which is super inefficient, especially since I'm a little bit concerned about how, many, how much fuel we've got um, to make these maneuvers, but... Oh, well. I think this will be enough 
for my uh, translunar injection, but I was really hoping to use it even for my orbital, um, well, my orbital insertion. All right, that's basically good. And then we'll just wait for the moon to show up. Again, just eyeballing things using very advanced science. There's the moon. Point our cells, prograde, and burn. Yeah, I think we will end up having the stage here, which makes me a bit unhappy. Definitely. Not by much, though. Not by much. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to focus on the moon, and I'm just going to slowly burn here. We're going to try to bring it down to maybe about 25k. I'm going to call that good enough for here because there's likely to be a little noise. Although, I guess I could do this, which is part of the problem here, and then just scooch in. Even then, wow. A little lower than I was looking for, but it doesn't actually matter. In fact, it's in a very real sense, preferable. All right, we got that. I'm going to extend the landing gear so I don't forget later on, which is good. Check the lights. Oh, is that not an L hotkey? Boop. Boop. Excellent. So we're going to save our power for now. How much does it use, actually? Some, but not too much. So we're going to want to make sure that when we get here, here's a great question. Are we able, are we going to be able to do that? Well, we got to hope that we've got a connection to the KSC, either that we can eyeball it or we can see the other satellite in the sky. There's a possibility that we won't be able to, which is crazy. All right, let's go ahead and extend the antenna now. I don't think that increases our power load. No, we're fine. All right, well, I guess I'm going to, I'm going to say to warp to here. Nice thing about this is it does automatically increase the warp speed as you go. So we're trying to land so we can transmit data about the surface of the moon. We might actually get lucky and have line of sight with um, one of the polar satellites too, even if we can't see this one. It's going to be harder because we're going to be very close to the surface, but it is possible. Let's go up to a thousand still. Cross over at a 50. Just give it a second to chill down. All right, good. So what's the periapsis looking like right now? Oh, I can't see it. There's too many stats. I don't know which one is mine. Um, cancel maneuver. I mean, we can figure it out. 22,000 is good, and I think we will have line of sight, which is great. I'm going to do this just so I have kind of a general idea about when to start the burn. Yeah, so basically, I'll start the burn with about 45 seconds left or something like that. I'm not, I wasn't uh, planning that. I'm mostly just going to be pointing retrograde and then doing the uh, doing the burn at that point. Um, let's not just blindly fast forward here. Let's uh, stop the time warp, quick save, time warp to there. Make sure you don't click on the yellow line when you do that time warp or things will be wonky. See that lost connections temporarily. Okay, well, we'll definitely have uh, our line of sight, which is great. We can go and warp a little bit closer. And a little bit more. Okay, that'll be good. Very close to the moon. Ooh, a bit of a seam, texture seam over there. Oh, no, it just had to pop in. All right, so we can still turn. Does this not have reaction wheels? Not enough electric charge. Oh, shit. We're not facing the sun. Yeah, I should have put some on the side. I was not thinking about that with our approach. Oh, noes! Oh, noes! Um, I think this one may be lost to deep space. This might be a antenna range test, then. Uh... Uh... Uh, <laughs> um, well, there's nothing that we're ever going to do that's going to change our, our angle here at all. We're going to forever drift, not facing the sun. Therefore, we'll never have power. So this probe is lost. Oh, no. <laughs> um, well, then, 
I should have hibernated on the way here, actually. Wasn't even thinking of that. But I should have put solar panels on the side. So this probe is going to be lost, because it's never going to turn. I should have made sure that I was facing the sun, and I should have just put the solar panels on here, after all. But I kind of expected, you know why? It's because I expected that center stage, I expected us to have that center stage on the way to the moon, so that we'd have the solar panels on the side. I didn't expect to stage it that early, um, and I think it was because our ascent wasn't quite as fuel aristic as I'd hoped. Well, there we go. We have, we have lost our first probe. This would actually, um, I was going to say, wouldn't have been a problem if it, wasn't, if it was manned, because we could still steer. Well, not if we don't have power. But we'd probably had solar panels on the side if, we, uh, if those were a manned mission. Because, yeah, if we had, like, two here, although if I put it, like, say, top and bottom and not everywhere, it would still be screwed. So we'll do a bit of a redesign. We'll make sure to get the extra solar panels here because clearly we will need that. So we're going to go to the Space Center, and I guess we're just going to blow up this probe. I mean, I guess I could leave it, and we could just, you know, see it later on where it has gone. Sure, what the hell? I will do that. Uh, it won't slow down the game too, too much. So basically, I want to run exactly the same mission again. But this time, this time, we're going to include... I mean, I could just face this to the sun, but I actually think it will be better if I do that. Bring it up just a little bit here so it doesn't get occluded too much. Maybe take these lights and bring them down like that. And we might need a little bit of extra oomph here. Um, what's our total weight right now? Yeah, we can actually run more fuel. Because I don't really want to add... Hmm. I think what I'm going to do is add a little bit more fuel up here. Which is going to be great. Because it's kind of hard to steer right now. We could add some reaction wheels. But... That would be that would add more weight over here than I would like. I think something like this will mean we've got enough fuel in this stage now to... Because this should still get us um, into space. This should be enough now to properly orbit and actually send us all the way to the moon and in fact have some here to help us orbit into the moon which is going to be a lot better which leaves everything here for the lander phase assuming that there's enough delta v in here for the lander phase i'm hoping especially with these lights one light makes sense though it really is um well we're gonna end on the light side of the moon actually we have to because of the solar panels you know what we're gonna get rid of the lights lights are cool but we have to land on the light side of the moon. We don't have, like, infinity batteries, and we don't have, like, a nuclear power cell. So we have no choice but to do that. And as such, we don't need lights because we'll be able to see our shadow to judge our descent. So that's going to be better. But we'll have to wait until next time for that. Thank you very much for watching, folks, and I'll see you then.